Hello there, my name is Watchton and I would like to introduce you to my buddy Scrap. What is a Scrap? Well, Scrap is a dual type water and poison Pokemon, pre evolution of Dragon. What is a Scrap doing on your team, Watchton? Tell you what, let's start up this PU battle against my buddy B2J135, you will see for yourself. I lead off with George Bush to set up my rocks right away, but Brian is not so keen on letting that happen and counter leads me with his Rotom. I switch to specially defensive Flander Scarlet to take a Blizzard, but it still does quite a bit telling me that he is running Specs, making it that much more threatening to my team. I go for a will o -Wisp, predicting a Whiskash, but he makes a better switch and goes to his Torkoal, knowing that it can sponge anything I would throw at it. Here is where Skelp comes in. It comes in on defensive things, goes for adaptability and choice specs boosted stab move and doesn't do a single HP damage to incoming Shedinja. Tough luck, we will try again later. So I go to Wigglytuff because it's immune to Shadow Sneak and resists Excisor, so it's the best answer I have for this thing. He however goes for a Will-O-Wisp and misses, but I wouldn't really mind it that much since this is an Assault Vest all-out attacker as he gets to find out right now when his Roselia takes half on the switch from Flamethrower. Right here I decided to stay in, knowing that I can sponge a Sludge Bump, but again he makes a better play and puts me to sleep instead, which will come into play later on. For now I decided to keep this thing as a sleep fodder and switch to Flareon, which thanks to Leftovers doesn't get 2 hit KO'd from this range with a Sludge Bump, so I take him out with a Flame Charge on the following turn, but unfortunately I don't get to Baton Pass plus 1 speed to anything as he brings his Shedinja right after to finish me off with a Shadow Sneak. So I decide to save Flareon as a Death Fodder and switch back to Wigglytuff, but at this point he is having enough of this thing and decides to set up a Sword Dance in my face. He then gets up to plus 4, but thankfully I wake up on the same turn and breaks his sash with a flamethrower. What I didn't expect is that I'm going to straight up die on the following turn to a resisted Excisor, but that's because I keep overestimating Wigglytuff's bulk, when in reality there really is nothing to overestimate. This thing might have a lot of HP, but paired with its pitiful defenses it's about as bulky as a balloon. And it just got puffed. So now things are really not looking good, my Rotom doesn't even have HP fire, all I can do is trick him a Choice Scarf, so I really thought that it's over right here, because the only remaining thing that can even hit a Shadinja is a Skrelp, which will easily get one hit KO'd before that happens. So I was just about to forfeit when a good guy Brian decided to talk to me and the conversation went like this. Doesn't your fracture have Mold Breaker? Yeah, so? Why don't you bring it in then? Wait, what does Mold Breaker do exactly? Don't worry about it, just bring Fracture and click Outrage. And that guys is how I learned about Mold Breaker. Somehow we are still in the game. Well, not really because his Rotom can annihilate me with a Specs Blizzard at any point, but it's better than getting body bugged by a Shedinja. However, of all the things he decides to bring his Whiskash, I guess afraid of my Skrelp which doesn't even outspeed him. So instead, I go to my Torterra and set up my late game rocks, pretty sure that it's just a regular Dragon Dance set and that he isn't going straight to his Rotom afraid of my Woodhammer. Indeed, he decides to go for a bounce instead just to do some damage to me, but I recover it off immediately with a Synthesis. Then he goes for a Dragon Dance, probably predicting another Synthesis, but now I go for a Wood Hammer, which easily takes out this thing, but then he brings his Rotom to finish the game with a Specs Blizzard. But this is where things start to get interesting. While he obviously takes out my Torterra, Scrap miraculously survives it with 10 HP and revenge kills him with a Hydro Pump. But that's not all. He then goes to Torkoal, hoping for a Hydro Pump miss, because at this point he thought that I outspeed both Torkoal and Marowak, which is not entirely true. I only outspeed the Torkoal, because it's a damn turtle, take it out of another Hydro Pump, but now funny games are over, Marowak wins him the game. Except not really, as he misses a Boomerang, Scrap hits the third Hydro Pump. <laughs> Now if that isn't a clutch comeback, then I don't know what is, so to answer your question, 
What is a scrub doing on my team? That. Pretty much that. Believe in scrub who believes in you. Good game, Brian. I bet now you wish you didn't tell me about Moldbreaker, but fools have thought that the scrub is going to turn this game around and pull a victory out of nowhere. Certainly neither one of us, but it sure made for a good show. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I might be able to squeeze one more battle this month, but I don't want to make any promises, so whether it's in this or the new year, I see you all next time.